welcome to the info session for the open call on the new project room at Locust Projects. Um, hopefully this is what you're here for, because <laughs> this is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so uh, before we kind of go through this, so, so how the format is going to be is I'm going to go through this um, deck of slides that talk about the project room, the open call process. Um, and then I will go to the application briefly just to show you a few things about the application. Um, and then we will do questions um, at the end. You can type in a question at any point. I'm just not going to answer them till the end just so that I can get through the flow of everything first. Um, you can either, you should be able to put them in the Q&A section, but if not, you can put them in the chat. Um, and then at the end, I will go to the top of the questions. I'll read the question off and, and answer it. Um, so again, thank you for joining today. Um, this is an info session about the open call for the project room. Uh, this is Locus Project's fifth space. Um, we just moved there in the spring. If you live in the Miami area, you definitely should go by and check it out. Um, it's at 297 Northeast 67th Street. Uh, right now we have an exhibition by Jen Clay, which will be closing on Saturday. Um, so again, if you live in the area, I would highly recommend um, going to the space, seeing it, seeing Jen's show. Um, we have pictures available and floor plans available of the space, um, but it always helps to go in and see it if you can. So let's get into this um all right okay um so if you're new to locust projects i definitely encourage you to understand our mission um if you're not new it's always good to have a refresher on what our uh, mission statement is i am an artist i'm one of the three artists that founded locust projects 25 years ago um and uh, our mission has been pretty much the same for those years. Uh, it's written a little bit differently here, but um, it's good to know and understand. So Locus Projects is an arts incubator producing and presenting exhibitions, programs, and projects. Our mission is to create opportunities for visual artists at all career stages, to invite risk-taking and experimentation, um, active com activate conversations around new art and ideas and advocate for artists and creative practices. Uh, so we started this space, like I said, 25 years ago, three artists, um, because we were interested in providing opportunities for artists to create new site-specific works. Um, so that part of the mission has um, stayed with us <laughs> all these years. Um, you are welcome to uh, type questions into the chat um, during this, this session. If you're watching a recording of this session, um, then you'll likely need to email me, which is submissions at locustprojects.org. Uh, I will receive those emails and I will respond to you um, fairly quickly. So um, eligibility uh, is a good place to start. <laughs> uh, we are looking for national, international, or local professional artists that are not currently enrolled in a degree-seeking program. We have a program for uh, people who are in an MFA program currently called Lab MFA, and we do that open call in the winter. Um, so if you are currently enrolled in an MFA program, just wait till that open call and you can apply to that program. If you're uh, currently a BFA student, um, you also do not qualify. Uh, so you'll just need to wait until you have finished your studies and you have started your professional practice. Um, we uh, commission new work. So uh, proposed work um, is required to be new and never to have been exhibited before. Um, that you're producing for this open call for Locust Projects. As I mentioned before, we started the organization um, to support new site-specific installation. 
um, collaborative artists are welcome to apply. Um, if you have a collaborative practice and you have support materials that are representative of that collaborative practice, please apply. Um, also individual artists, um, we welcome your applications. We are, we are a visual arts organization. Um, so we support visual arts projects. Um, we support artists uh, addressing social justice issues, including race, identity, um, uh, climate change, environmental advocacy. We're interested in putting works out there that are current and, um, you know, are, are looking for a voice, a place uh, to be heard. Um, so what do we provide? We provide a production budget of up to $5,000. Um, and we'll get into that budget further down in this, in this um, slide deck. We provide a $3,100 artist fee that is separate from the production budget. We provide um, a round trip uh, coach airline ticket to artists that are more than 150 miles away from Miami. We provide accommodation and we provide a um, $50 per diem stipend, again, for artists that are more than 150 miles away for up to 21 days, because we know we are asking for new site specific work and it's not gonna happen in a day. <laughs> um, so we wanna give you some time to be able to do that in our space. Application instructions. So there's about eight things that we're looking for, um, and we'll go through each one of them. Um, the project description, uh, the project impact, uh, an example that you're going to give of your project in our space. And I'll go, again, I'll go into more detail about what you need to do for that. Uh, a general artist statement, the production budget, um, a bio CV or resume, and up to five images or links of time-based works. Image details, I don't know if people always get hung up on this one, but um, because of the way the submission program is, um, it's hard to know, you know what it is that you're providing a sample. So the image details, you're just telling us what are those image samples that you provided so we understand um, what they are. Um, okay, the project description. So we're giving you, we're very generous, we're giving you 500 words for this, um, which I think is a good amount of words uh, for you to explain what it is you want to do in our um, 625 square foot new project room space. Um, so uh, keep in mind, you know, the reviewers that are looking at this, they only have what you're putting in front of them. So you wanna be as clear and concise as possible. So tell us, what are you proposing? Um, explain it you know, simply and clearly. I am proposing a uh, 100 channel video installation with um, you know, three 5.1 audio tracks. Give us that detail of, of the material that you're using. Um, but you also want to tell us, you know, what is your concept? What is this project? What are you trying to convey? Um, what do you want the viewer to experience? Um, and then explain, you know, how is this idea being realized? Um, I would highly suggest you you write this project description, give it to somebody who is not familiar with art at all, have them read it, make sure they understand it. Um, because again, we're not in your head. We don't know everything that's going on in there. We don't have a background um, on you or your work. So you need to make this project description really clear. The project impact. Um, so as you might remember um, from our mission statement above, uh, this is part of our mission statement that um, we are looking for uh, projects that embrace experimentation and, and are risk-taking in your practice. 
Um, we are not a commercial gallery space. Um, we started this space to be outside of that commercial gallery system and allow people to explore and express ideas that didn't fall into that structure. Um, so for this project impact, you have 350 words. So tell us how your project embraces this experimentation, how it's taking a risk. Maybe traditionally in, in most of your work, um, maybe you're a printmaker that makes woodblock prints. But for this um, for this project proposal, you're interested in uh, creating a interactive community piece um, where yeah, you're inviting local residents to come in and you're going to interview them and ask them questions about where they're from. And somehow that, this is just a hypothetical situation. <laughs> and, and then uh, you're going to take that, that material and it's going to be um, somehow transposed into the gallery space. Um, so it's, you can explain that hey, I normally do these, these wood block prints, but I've always wanted to do this, this project that's outside of my normal practice, or it's enabling me to try something that I wouldn't normally do because Locust Project is providing me this funding to do it. Um, you also, it also doesn't need to be that extreme that, you know, oh, I do this one thing and I'm proposing this thing that is totally different. Um, it can be more subtle that um, this opportunity at Locust Project is allowing to you expand your practice and just detail out how that is. Um, we, you know, want to help get uh, current voices out there in the world um, that are dealing with, you know, topics like social justice issues, race identity. Um, so we, uh, there's no particular um, right idea for your project. It's whatever it is for you. But um, because we are a you know public organization and we are serving the the local community, um, we're looking for interesting ideas that have a voice. Um, so you can detail that all out in your project impact. Um, so then we ask for uh, a project rendering um, of the project room. So in the application, which I'll show you in a minute, there's an attachment that has these pictures, this floor plan. Um, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. You can literally take this picture of um, the floor plan and you can print it out and you can draw in you know, where, you know, the elements are of your proposed project. Um, you could also, you know, create a digital version of it, um, showing us a rendering of what you propose in the space. But don't, um, it shouldn't be anything that you're spending any massive amount of time on. It's just a way to help us see that you indeed are planning <laughs> to create a new work for this space. And you've thought about this um, 625 square foot project room that we have in our new gallery space. So here's a couple um, images that show you views. There's this duct work um, on the top here. Uh, there is some track lighting that is just being put in right now. Um, and you know, keep in mind these notes over on the side where it talks about the heights and the beams. Um, if you know that that's a factor for what you're trying to do. Um, so you can take any of these images. Um, you can uh, you can create this however you want. It's just a way for us to read your project description, look at this this sample. And uh, hopefully it supports what you've just described to us and helps us visualize it. Um, and here's a view of the whole space and you can see the project room um, using my hand, which isn't helping you, but uh, circling it with the mouse, the project room is right here. Um, 
all of these images are in the, the PDF that I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, so you can grab any of them to make this, uh, this rendering, this illustration. Uh, so then you're going to give us an artist statement um, and a CV. Uh, so the artist statement is going to give us an idea of what your practice is, um, you know, what themes uh, you focus on in your work, what mediums you focus on, uh, your thoughts about the viewer and how they play a role in your work. Um, and then the CV or resume is pretty straightforward. We're just looking at, um, we're just trying to understand that you are, yes, a professional artist. You, you have uh, graduated from school. Uh, you don't have to have gone to school um, for art to apply to this, but we just wanna make sure that you're not currently studying, um, that you should have some, uh, you know, experience on your resume that that illustrates that you are um, looking at being an artist as a professional career, that you have an exhibition history, you have been on some residencies, or you've done something, anything supporting um, your, you know, position, whether it's you've just started out and you only have a few years of experience, or You've been making work for, you know, 30 years and you've got 30 years worth of experience. Both, um, one doesn't mean more than another. Um, we don't put a heavy weight on this and I'll explain how we look at all these materials in the review process. Uh, image samples, this should say one. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I caught this error uh, before I output of this. Um, so it's just one rendering of the proposed project and then five examples of the past work and up to three um, video links. So your um, your project rendering, the floor plan, that can also be time-based. Um, and what you'll need to do uh, is just upload a PDF that has a link on it so that we can get to it. Uh, the image sample list, which I mentioned, uh, you just need to detail out what are these samples that you've given us, what is the title, you know, straightforward information about the project so that we understand what it is that we're looking at. Um, so the project budget. Um, so we, as you remember, maybe from an earlier slide, um, we have up to a $5,000 production budget for you. So that production budget should not include your artist fee. That, that's a separate amount of money. Um, the production budget should include whatever it's going to entail to put this project together. Um, why do we ask you to do this? We ask you to do this because one, we want to understand that you have done your research, you understand what it's going to take to do what it is you're proposing. Um, because we need to know that it can be done within um, the budget that we have for you. We don't want to be committing to a project that is maybe a fantastic project, but it's gonna cost you know $15,000 to produce. We don't have that budget for this. Um, so you're going to, oops, <laughs> you're going to list uh, if there's production fabrication costs. These are just examples. And I'll talk about this again when I show you the form and submittable. If there's a equi special equipment that you need, equipment rental costs, whatever materials you need to produce what your proposed project is. If there's specialized lighting that's not, you know, like the track lighting that we're putting up right now, um, you would want to budget for that. If there's a professional or technical support, if you have public programs or activations, so say you have a project where uh, you have five musicians that are going to be, uh, need to be in the gallery and performing uh, once a week. You need to put that cost um, that you're allocating to pay them uh, to support your project in this budget. 
if there's uh, additional artist travel or if you have an assistant um, that needs to come with you, that would need to be in your budget. Uh, installation and construction beyond you know, 24 hours of basic infrastructure labor. If you have a very, um, I don't know, time consuming uh, construction piece where you need somebody there supporting you, you need to put that in there. Assistant fees, if you have, if you need an assistant to help you. Shipping, so if you're gonna make some of these elements in your studio, uh, you need them shipped to Locust Projects and you're gonna create some other elements while you're there down at Locust. Um, that, and that's shipping both ways. So if you're shipping pieces to us and you expect pieces to go back to you at the end, uh, you need to allocate that in this production budget. Um, disposal, uh, maybe you're going to fill the gallery with uh, 100 rubber tires, but you do not want those 100 rubber tires shipped back to you. Um, you'll need to figure out what is the disposal of that. Um, so yeah, any other cost um, to realize your project and deal deinstallation beyond just the basic infrastructure that we have. And again, these are just examples <laughs> of, of what your production budget should be. Um, you know your project, so you should know what these things are that you need for your project. And just a reiteration, the artist fee should not be part of this production budget. That's a separate amount of money uh, that Locust will provide to you. Um, okay, and the review process. It's always good to know and understand the review process so that you understand the elements that you're putting together, um, how we're looking at them and what we're rating your proposal on. So each open call, we put together a new review committee of local, national, international artists that have pre previously shown at Locust Projects and, and usually one local curator. I'm putting that committee together right now. Um, so I don't can't tell you exactly who's gonna be on it, but, but it also doesn't matter. Um, they're, they're people that are familiar with Locust and our mission. They've worked with us before. Um, we, you know, try to put together a group of diverse voices. So, um, you know, if somebody leans towards a certain medium, we'll try to put somebody that leans towards another medium on there so that there's a variety of people um, reviewing the proposals. Um, so that committee um, is, is the only people that are rating your proposals. I'm not rating your proposal. No staff at Locust Project is rating your proposal. Um, and what that committee is looking at is the conceptual strength of your proposal. Um, you know, what is your concept? What are you trying to convey? Um, you know, is this uh, ambitious? Does it use the space? Um, <clears throat> the strength of your past work. Uh, we, you know, we get proposals from uh, people all over the world. Um, and many of you are new to us, so we don't, um, we use the past work as an entry point to understand what you do. Um, and, and then we do evaluate what is, what is the strength of that past work. Uh, the unique or innovative approach to transforming locus space um, and how that is an extension of your practice which I mentioned both in our mission statement and um, in one of the questions that you answer for the grant, um, we were reading that. We're, we're wanting to understand um, where does this project fit within the scope of your work and how is it, how is it advancing you? How is it, how is it helping you? <laughs> uh, and feasibility of the proposed project. Um, related to the budget and logistical concerns. So we're gonna look at um, your project description and we're gonna look at the budget. Um, and the committee is going to evaluate, you know, does this seem feasible? Uh, uh, they're also gonna look at your past work. Does, this, does it appear that this artist can create this proposed work? 
Um, and then we're always looking for a compelling approach to contemporary artistic practice, social concerns, or community impact. Um, we're, we're not looking for derivative work. Uh, we hope that you have some idea and some understanding of where your art practice is within contemporary art, um, and you're not uh, providing a proposal to us that um, is derivative of another artist's work. Um, okay, where is this gonna go next? Okay. Uh, so then proposals are due uh, Thursday, November 30th at midnight Eastern time. Um, late proposals will not be accepted. Uh, we, you know, we're just using the submittable system. So if there's something that happens uh, with submittable where the applications are submitted um, there at the last minute, um, we can't help you, so don't don't wait until 11.59 p.m. to submit it. It doesn't do you any good um, because the proposals, um, they're uh, sorted in, in, in a random order. Um, so it doesn't matter who's applied, who's, it's not like you're at the top of the list and you're the first thing that everybody sees if you um, submit last. So don't do that. Um, I'm going to go to the submittable form um, here in one second. I'm just going to shift my screen share. And then after I do that, then I'm going to go to questions. Um, okay. Bear with me while I, uh, while I move my share to where I want to be now, which is... I had this all lined up. Okay, here it is. Okay, so I'm going to share this. And um, so you are submitting your proposal through our submittable form, which is a link on our website. Um, and the form is pretty much broken up exactly the way that uh, we just um, talked about. In the application, I just wanted to highlight just a quick, a few quick things. Um, one, you will be able to get to the floor plan here, um, which hopefully you see that right now. I never know how it works with this. Um, and these are going to be the images that some of the images that I just shared with you. You're welcome to grab any of these images. Um, like I said, you can make a physical drawing on top of the paper and scan it in. You can make a digital drawing, whatever best works for you. Um, so this is there for you. And the other thing I wanted to make note of is, okay, so it's a project description, the floor plan rendering. So that's where you're going to upload. Um, um, so if you have a time-based um, Example uh, rendering, like I said, put a link as a on a PDF. You can submit a you know MP4 or an MOV. Um, I think it's just a little bit easier because you can you know post it on your make it a private thing on your Vimeo account um, and make it a clickable link on a PDF is generally easier. Uh, artist statement there, project impact is here. Uh, so the project budget, I just wanted to go over this. I gave you just those general things um, that you could note as your production budget. And all we're looking for here is for you to, you know, type in uh, 100 tires. And that is, I have no idea how much 100 tires is. I'm gonna say that that is $1,200. Um, you can just list things out like this. Um, you know, I need a tire system. And I'm going to pay them $200. Uh, whatever it is. It's very simple, the budget. Um, so don't, don't, um, don't stress out about it. We just want to understand uh, from what we've read in your project description, you know, how it's all coming together. Um, so hopefully you're not going to put 100 tires in the, in the project. <laughs> uh, then your CV, you'll upload it. That went straight forward. Images are sketches. Oh, I did give that. Okay, I wasn't wrong there. I'm sorry. 
Um, so you can put, um, there's actually two spots. So uh, give us one image of the floor plan that shows what it is that you're doing and how it goes into the space. Then you can use this one. The images are sketches of the proposed project, um, however you want. So everybody works differently. Uh, you may have started something in your studio. You have some rough samples of something that you want to show us here. You could do that. You could also take uh, more of those images of the project room, impose your project um, in there, whether it's a drawing on top of the photo or it's a digitally created um, sketch. If you have time-based media, um, I should, okay, we're enabled on the PDF, so we're good here. So just do the PDF with a link. Don't make your time-based media more than five minutes. Um, we have lots of proposals to look at, um, and we're just trying to get an understanding of what you're doing. Your past work, you're going to upload here. Um, and these, so uh, if, you have time-based media and you'll see, oh no, what do I do? Because I would just want to put video links down here, but it's making me attach something. So just attach a, a Word document. No, you can't attach a Word document. Attach, ooh, I got to add PDF to this. Um, I'll enable PDF here in one second. Um, or you can attach a JPEG, anything that just says uh, time-based media links below. Um, it's submittable as a funky system. Um, so, you know, I just want to make sure people are, are attaching work and that's why it's uh, forced upon you here. But if you have time-based media, you can put your links down here. Um, like I said, I, at the end of this, I'll enable PDF so that you can put a PDF here and say that you, you have time-based media. Image details. Uh, these are just what we talked about before. Just you know, type in. Um, it's good if you have images. You know, just type in whatever the you know. Uh, my file name is orange book dot jpeg, and then tell me what that is. Or if it's a video link, um, you know, you can just say first video link is the best movie, or whatever, whatever it's called, and go into the details there. Um, below this is demographics information that we don't base any decision-making process on whatsoever. Uh, this is just about to understand who, who is our audience here, who is applying to us, um, how did you hear about us, uh, just so that we can make sure that we're um, getting out there in the world and uh, reaching all of the people um, that are artists and um, <laughs> that we're, we're uh, you know, not just focusing on one particular group or one particular type or one particular age range. Um, okay, so I am going to go back to my presentation and I'm going to go through questions now um, and I'll, I'll put it on a better image let's leave it there okay so again if you have questions um, go ahead and type it into the Q&A section and I will answer them uh, so the first question I see here is why is this not for currently enrolled MFA students? Because we have another program, which is called Lab MFA, which you can apply for um, in the winter. We usually put that open call up um, in uh, late January, early February, and it will be for an exhibition in this coming summer, in 2024 in the summer. Um, next question is, if a PhD candidate who has completed all coursework and have professional art career eligible to apply? Uh, yes, um, we don't have PhD studio art in the United States. I know Europe has it, um, but that's fine. We, we do want to see, if you are a PhD candidate, um, we do want to see 
uh, that history of your professional art practice, um, you know, represented on your CV. And again, as I'm going through these questions, if if I'm not answering it to uh, to to what you're looking for, just type in another question, um, and I'll get to that too. Um, oh, I'm going to click answered live. Oh, look at that button. Okay, next question. Um, can can a derivative work apply like a part two of a project with new work? With, with new artwork and materials that come from a different project? Um, that's a, you know, always a tricky question. Uh, so we're, I would just keep in mind, we are commissioning new work. So uh, maybe if you started something on a very small scale and um, this opportunity at Locust Projects is giving you the space to expand it and expand upon it. And you've clearly detailed that out in your project description and the samples you're providing, then yes, that's fine to apply with. If it's just a straightforward, you know, I showed this project in New York and it was in a space that was just 250 square feet. And, and now I'm just adding a few elements to it. So it fits your 625 square foot space that's probably not gonna work for us. We wanna know what is it that you're expanding upon the project. Um, okay, next, pro next question. If you have an artist practice, but do not have a BFA or MFA, are you able to apply? Absolutely. Yeah, you do not need to have um, an arts degree to apply to this open call. You do need to have some uh, example of a professional art practice. Um, so if you have never shown any work before um, and you uh, don't have anything to put on your CV, um, then this probably isn't the opportunity for you. This is not a, uh, it, it's not a first time experience uh, type opportunity. This is for somebody who is committed to their art practice, no matter what their background is, whether it is uh, from the education system or if they're a self-taught artist, um, to create a new work. Um, and, you know, to be able to be competitive in this process, um, based on what the review committee is looking at, we need to understand that you, you can make this project. Um, so that it is something that's feasible. Hopefully that answers that. Uh, next question. I am a current Master of Design student graduating next month. Am I eligible to apply? Can you give me an example of time-based work? So, okay, two questions. First question. Um, so if you are a graduating uh, master's student, um, the, the question is, is can you apply? Technically, yes. I would recommend that you wait until um, next year when we do the open call because your application will be uh, more, I mean, competitive. The, the more that you've been out there in the world um, and built up that professional uh, practice. Um, you are technically a enrolled student uh, during when this open call is. I guess maybe technically it's a no. <laughs> um, I would I would recommend waiting. We're we're here where we do the open call every year, um, for the most part. Uh, an example of time based works. If if you have video video-based works or audio-based works, uh, performance works, those would be time-based works. Um, things that you we can't uh, really evaluate by looking at a still image. Um, I don't see ceiling height on the floor pan. Oh yeah, it's there, um, right? Well, it gives you to the ducts and to the beams and the main ceiling. Uh, so it is all there on the floor plan. Um, 
it's relevant to your work. Okay, so hopefully that that works for you. <laughs> uh, there's things, you know, as you can see, oops, in the images, um, where you can see there's different ceiling heights because of that duct work there. Um, so just make sure you read through this uh, floor to ceiling measurements section. Um, next question is, apologies if this has already been asked, will we be able to see the recording? Um, you will be able to see this recording? Yes. <laughs> uh, we will post this recording of this session um, up after this. Okay, that was an easy one. Um, can you add your own money to the project if it costs more than 5,000? Yes. Um, so you just will want to, you'll want to, if your project costs more than $5,000 to produce, uh, you will want to make sure that you address that in both your project description and in the budget so that the review committee understands, okay, you know, this project cost $7,500 and this artist has clearly stated that they have $2,500 coming from, uh, you know, the Foundation for Contemporary Arts. Um, we want, we, we, the committee will be scared um, to give you a high rating in the feasibility section if you don't clearly illustrate where that additional funding is coming from, um, if it's going to be more than $5,000. Uh, so just be careful about that. Okay. Oh, did I click the wrong thing? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, sorry. Um, okay. Hello. Please clarify if the budget can cover international flights for the artist. Um, yeah, it will cover a round trip flight uh, for the artist. Answered live. Um, if I need to be there personally to install, should my travel cost be included in the budget? No, uh, that's included in the airline ticket that we give you. Um, we would expect um, that anybody that is selected for this opportunity will be coming to personally install the project as we are asking for a new site-specific work. Um, I think it would be difficult to uh, produce that work without you physically being there. Um, is it a problem if water drips on the floor of the project space? <laughs> I work with melting ice. Um, we get lots of questions like this in terms of, uh, you know, what kind of limitations that we have. Um, we, you know, the space was started by artists. Um, we like to try to facilitate whatever we can. Um, so I wouldn't, particularly worry about limitations of the space in this part of the project and this you know part of the process you know propose what it is that you want to do and um we will look at it and we will you know if your project is selected we will try to help you facilitate it i mean there's you know some limitations, like we don't want any, you know, killing of animals or things like that. But <laughs> um, within reason, we will try to help uh, you facilitate as much as we can. Um, what weightage do you put on each of the review process points? Um, they're actually very evenly weighted. Um, they're all weighted the same. Uh, it's usually a scale from one to five um, for each of the categories. Hopefully that was enough. Um, what is considered a concise CV? Is there a page limit? I love a one page CV, uh, two pages okay. When it gets beyond that, it's just a bit cumbersome. We're we're just we're not waiting that much on the CV. We just want to see the highlights. We want to understand that, you know, you you have done something in your professional practice. Um, we're not waiting one thing more than another, like, oh, they've had a show at this place, or 
oh, this person only shows at, you know, artist run spaces. We're not putting weight on it like that. It's more just to understand um, what you've done in the scope of what you have done. Um, so shorter is better just because it takes a long time to scroll through a long CV and it's just, it's really not necessary for this. Um, I think chat is disabled. Well, that's okay. You can just type something into Q&A. So if, if I answered a question and it didn't give you what you want, just put another question in and I will get to it. Okay, should we include travel accommodation costs in our project budget if we are based out of Miami? No, only include it if um, you are traveling with somebody, with an assistant. Um, if you're a collaborative group and there's a lot of members in your collaboration, um, you're probably going to want to put some cost there towards uh, travel. Um, accommodation costs, we have that accommodation for you, so you don't have to put any of that in the budget. The budget is about production costs, um, not about travel and accommodation. Maybe that's a better way to say it. <laughs> um, unless there's something outside of the scope of, of what I talked about. Um, hi, and thanks. If you're collaborating with each, if you're, if you're collaborating, will each artist be rewarded the 3,100? No. So if you are a collaborative, whether you're an individual artist or collaborative, that fee is project-based. So the artist fee would be $3,100 for your collaborative group. $3,100 in whole, you would need to disperse that to the different one person will need to be designated and disperse the funds to the additional people. Um, if you're one artist, you will get that $3,100. Um, I joined late. Will there be a replay sent out? Uh, yes, we, we are recording this session and it will be available for you to view online um, and it will be up uh, shortly in a few days. Uh, also, what happens after creating the project? The art is still ours and is it something you will be buying once we are selected? No, we are a non-collecting institution. Uh, we facilitate uh, artist exhibitions. We do not collect work. So you need to build into your budget what you are doing with your project after it is done being shown at Locust Projects. If you need that whole project packed up and shipped back to you in your studio, that cost needs to be in your production budget. Um, we do not. We are not a commercial gallery space. We do not sell work. We are not selling your installation. You own your installation. Um, so hopefully that is good. Um, can you utilize the exterior walls? I noticed you guys do lectures on one of the exterior walls. Um, it, for the this open call um, for the project room, I would recommend that you keep it contained within the project room space. Um, if you have some thoughts uh, that relate to it expanding outside of that, um, you're certainly welcome to note them in your in your application. But I would just be a little bit cautious because we have, um, you know, the rest of the space is the main gallery. Um, we're going to be doing an open call for the main gallery in the spring. Um, so there's other work out there. Um, and I would be just careful about confusing the committee or having the committee think like, okay, well, if we, we love this project, but if we pick it, they really need to spill out the doorway and, you know, have something on that exterior wall. I would just be careful about that. Um, Okay, next question. What is the time frame for when this project would need to be completed? Is it uh, flexible based on the artist needs? Great question. I meant to address this while I was talking, but I totally forgot. 
Um, so we are looking to fill gaps in our schedule um, that start in the fall of 2024 and go through 2025. Um, we do, you know, if you are selected, we do talk to you. We don't just throw you in a time slot. Okay, you've got this month. Um, so we do talk to you to try to figure out when are you available, when are you not available to schedule it. Um, would also like to know in the space, are we able to transform, are, are we able to transform it all but structurally? Um, and the question's a little bit vague, but I'm just going to go with yes. <laughs> um, you you are able to transform that space as much as you want for your idea. Um, if it's something super expansive um, in terms of transformation, you need to build those costs into your production budget. So say you want to take um, this room and you want to... Uh, you know, uh, you want to build a wall through the center of it or something like that. You need to put that in your in your production costs, both for the creation of it and the demolition of it. Okay. Um, oh, I gotta, gotta crank through these questions here. Okay. Ooh, there's a lot. Um, next question. Is the budget something that can change if selected? Yes. Um, in case prices change. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we, we're not going to hold you to dollars per dollar for your budget. It's, it's so we can understand that you understand what it entails to make this piece. If your budget ends up uh, you'll you'll need to move things around in your budget so that you can stay within that five thousand um, dollars if cost of certain things go up. Um, could an image of the ceiling layout of various obstacles, materials, anything relevant to attaching to a suspending be made available? Um, there's you can see the ceiling in some of the images that are on that PDF um, that I clicked on earlier. Um, it's really detailed out really as much as we can. Um, I can try and get an image of just the ceiling. If you want to email me, um, I can facilitate that. Um, how would the Locust Projects team view an individual who has extensive experience as a luxury fashion designer, but only has a year of 2D, 3D, and or installation art? I mean, anybody's welcome to apply. Um, it, it really depends on, you know, what is the proposed project? Um, if you don't have very much experience uh, doing works outside of uh, being a luxury fashion designer, you're just likely not going to be rated too high in some of the categories because it might be hard for the committee to understand if this project is feasible for you. Um, but I still encourage you to to apply, and then um, you know you you never know. Uh, are you open to interactive projects that collect images from within the six hundred and fifty square foot for collection, analysis, and use potentially in future works? These might include rolling time based exhibitions, but aren't limited to those a still time frame to be installed in the future work or fed into a simulation or AI for further work or exhibition? Um, I'm going to try to answer this question as best as I can. Uh, we are open to whatever ideas uh, you have for us. Um, it is a commission of a new work. It is a project. It is open to the public. It's fine if your project is interactive and you're collecting content that then becomes something else, but it needs to be something <laughs> um, to be part of our exhibitions program. Uh, I have a question regarding the production budget. If I have the possibility to get extra funding for materials or a sponsor, can I make use of that? Um, should I outline the budget? Yes and yes. Um, I mentioned I answered that que a question, similar question earlier. If it costs more than five thousand, that's fine. Just tell us um, how much it costs and where that money is coming from. 
to clarify what is a new work. For example, I am a video artist and I want to do a large scale installation. I have started some of the video works, but I have never shown. That's fine. Um, you know, we expect uh, work will be have started for some artists. Um, as long as you haven't exhibited it, um, then that's fine. Um, but if it's really far along, then then maybe it's not fine because we are commissioning the new work. So we so we want to make sure that you know we are commissioning it. Um, is it okay to include both images and time-based works? Yes, you can, but again, just be mindful of the number of applications that we're looking for and don't take advantage of that. Don't give us, you know, uh, five images and three time-based works. Kind of even it out and not, you use your best judgment. Uh, I saw a projector in the room in photos, but not on the plan. Are there multiple projectors and can projectors be moved? Um, there is AV equipment at Locust Projects. Um, I would recommend um, that you still write it into your production budget because um, there may be some specific needs that you have for projectors. Um, so, you know, figure out what the cost is of that. Um, but we do have, um, you know, varying levels of, of projectors uh, available. Uh, when would the exhibition take place? I already answered that. Um, we're looking at filling gaps starting in the fall of 2024 into uh, 2025. Can I hang from the ceiling? And if so, do you know the weight limit? You can hang from the ceiling. I do not know the weight limit. Um, it's, you know, a fairly substantial structure, but, you know, use your best judgment in what you propose to us. Something, uh, you know, that that's extremely heavy. You would need to figure out how to engineer that to work. Um, the three video links in addition, is three video links in addition to five images? No, give us one or the other or some combination thereof. Only give us video links if you have time-based media and you need to, um, you, you need them to represent your work. Um, hello, Locus Projects team. Thank you for your dedication and for providing the opportunity to apply to this grant. Um, okay. uh, are you primarily interested in well-established artists? No. Um, or is there a chance for emerging artists to receive this support? Yes. <laughs> uh, we're interested in artists in all stages of their career. And a technical question. Uh, would it be feasible to a sculptural object on the floor with, oh, could you screw in an object on the floor? Um, the object is, uh, the, the floor is um, cement. Um, so you just need to keep that in mind. Um, but as I've mentioned earlier, we try to facilitate uh, what we can with what your idea is. Um, okay, do you have, a connection to a shop, woodworking makers. Um, I mean, uh, yes, we, we, we know people and we can help facilitate something specific that you need, um, but you still want to put an estimation in your budget for things like that. Um, we do also have um, space available at Locust Projects to do some fabrication. Um, oh, shoot, I clicked on the wrong one. Um, okay, this, okay, this one's answered live. This one, um, hi, I know you probably mentioned this. What is the total budget inclusive of artist fees? Also, our travel part of the production, the project budget. I answered this already. So there's a $5,000 production budget, $3,100 artist fee, and the travel and accommodation is separate. Uh, you might want to add non-Latinx or non-Haitian original to the do not prefer. Thank you. A good comment. We will amend that. Um, would our installations be able to physically creep out of the room? So I answered this already. Uh, 
Yes, but be cautious. You don't want to um, propose anything where the committee is going to feel like you're encroaching too much on the other space. Uh, what is the duration of the project? Could be, or what is the duration limitation of the project proposal? I think you're asking how long the project is up. Um, so they're usually up for eight weeks, um, approximately. I hope that was what your question was. Uh, also, logistically, are there ceiling hanging capacities of things around 100 pounds? Um, I'm not super familiar with the, with the weight limit of this particular ceiling, um, but generally ceilings you know, there's a way to engineer it to support things that are around 100 pounds. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't worry about that at this part of the project. I would just think about just building some money into your budget to uh, support, you know, facilitating hanging something. Can we configure the entry and the exits in a different size and add doors? Um, would that be included in the available budget or configuring the space or would that be that would be part of your project budget. So if you want to change the space in any way, if you want to make that entryway smaller, um, if you want to configure the space in any way, shape or form, you should add that to your production budget. Uh, do international artists need special health insurance? I have no idea. Um, you know, we we uh, are commissioning new work. Uh, so anything that you need on your own in terms of health insurance, that that's um, that's up to you. Um, what space do you have for working fabricating in near the space uh, for those of us that come from the outside area? There is space to do fabrication on site. You do have uh, availability to the whole uh, 625 foot square square foot project room in addition to some workspace there at Locust Projects. Um, are there any uh, off-limit subjects? No. <laughs> uh, will, visual, will visuals be suitable, even not appropriate for all audiences? Um, we, we don't censor things. So, I mean, don't be concerned about giving us a proposal about whatever it is that you're trying to convey. Um, are those boundaries either topical or visually? Could some centers be? No, we, we, we don't, we're, we're an artist founded organization. We are not, um, we are not here to censor. Um, so I would just make sure if you have a sensitive uh, subject um, for your proposed project that it's very clear in your project description so that the review committee isn't concerned about maybe your approach to the topic or they they understand that you're trying to put an idea out there. Um, sorry if I missed this part. Do we need to have help with promotion aspects? An opening reception. No, Locust takes care of that. How long do we have to install or make the work? Uh, that's up to you. We have up to 21 days uh, built into um, the budget um, in terms of accommodation and per diem. Um, I see a digital production, one of the images. Is it available? Yes. Uh, you can email me separately and I can give you um, I can give you an AV list of what we have. Um, but again, if you are uh, you know, making some type of video installation work, you should be familiar with um, AV equipment. And I would think that you have certain requirements for, for what you need. Uh, is the project space limited to the project room? Yes. Or can all the space be intervened? No. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, we're going to do an open call for the main um, the main space in the spring. So you, for this, you want to keep your project contained to the project room. Um, when is the exhibition opening? Um, it depends on what slot you're provided, which I, I mentioned earlier. 
uh, given that you want us to push the boundaries of our practice, how much familiarity do we need to demonstrate with new medium method we've chosen? Um, it's so just think about your whole application as a story. You know, you're telling us a story. Uh, so if you're proposing something that's outside of what you normally do, and your previous work doesn't necessarily help that story, then make sure that the samples that you're providing to us, those three samples, um, somehow make the committee feel like, okay, this person has done some research, they, they know how they're gonna accomplish this, I can see how they're visualizing it. Uh, how many artists will be selected from this project? What is the time frame for this project? Uh, so we're selecting multiple uh, projects to fall into our time slot um, between fall 2024 and through 2025. Um, uh, I think that answer is close to the time frame. I can't give you an exact number, <laughs> um, but more than one. Um, Hi, does the submission have to be completed all at once or can you log in and out? Yeah, uh, if you haven't used Submittable before, yes, you can log in and out. Once you hit the submit button, then it's out of your hands and it's in my hands. Um, it doesn't lose your information if you've created a free Submittable account and you've started the application. Um, are the projects planned to be showcased in the spring of 2024? No. Um, they're not. We, we are programmed in, in the spring of 2024, so this is beyond that. Uh, will the selected person have the flexibility to select the dates to go? I've answered this already. We work. If you are selected, we will work with the artist to find something that fits both your schedule and our schedule. How many artists will be selected each year? I can't give you an exact number, but generally, you know, it's probably four or five. Um, can't see where the obstructions are. Um, I'm guessing this is the question about the ceiling. Just send me an email at submissions at locustprojects.org and I will um, I will get you a picture of the ceiling. Uh, can we hang things, metal sheet speakers from the ceiling? Yes. Uh, what are the time periods for the projects? When are they going up? I've already answered this. Um, are there any dates required for the artist to be there after the installation, like artist talks or anything? Um, no, there's nothing required, um, but you're certainly welcome to be there. Um, in your project description, if there's some type of public event that you really want to do as part of uh, your um, exhibition, then mention it in there. Um, uh, a part of my proposal is community interviews. Does Locus have community engagement connections that could be developed prior to my installation and for my installation? Um, yeah, if you have a community-driven project, um, we will certainly help connect you to the community um, before your exhibition. Can I present microbes, cultures enclosed in double containers? Uh, yes. I mean, I don't really know what that is, but it sounds okay to me. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, you know, again, we're in the business of helping facilitate what you're trying to do. If there's some harmful elements in your proposed project, then I would be concerned about that, but I'm not sure if uh, these microbe cultures are harmful, but if they're not, then that sounds fine to me. Um, do you have any recommendations about the images of the proposal? Is it necessary that the images are very close to what is being expected when finished, or could it be a project that is developed and finished according to the experience there? Um, again, just think about you're telling us a story with this application, so whatever materials you upload um, should be supporting when I went over what the review criteria is, what your proposed project is, um, your visualization of that. If you have samples that you know give us some insight, but they're not finished, that's totally fine. Housing, are families accommodated? 
Um, we try to do the best we can. Um, and that's something that we'll just get, we can get into in more detail if you are selected. Um, but you would need to facilitate the travel expenses for your, you know, for any family members that need to travel with you. Uh, what is the month of the implementation of the project? I've already answered this. Um, it, it spans, so uh, starting in the fall of 2024 through 2025. Um, mailing list for the spring open call. I heard about this on hyperlink and in New York, so I miss it. Just um, on the Locust Projects website, just sign up for, just add your email address and um, Locust Projects sends uh, regular uh, emails out and you will see it. Um, all right, we're almost here. What is the difference between the open call and the main gallery one? Well, this is the project room. So just different size spaces. The project room is 625 square feet. Uh, the main gallery is much bigger than that. Um, so the, the main differences are the size of the space. So if you have a project which is really large in scope and you're struggling to make it work in this 600 square foot uh, room, then just wait for the um, the open call in the spring. What are the elements welcome to accompany visual arts installations? What are, I'm sorry, <laughs> I just totally read that wrong. Are sound elements welcome to accompany? Yeah, sure, sound is fine. Um, there is, uh, you know, obviously two spaces in our space, the project from the main gallery. So um, something that is extraordinarily loud in the project room, uh, we're probably gonna have to figure out, you know, ways of soundproofing that in some way so that there isn't this, you know, massive spillover uh, that's, that's being imposed on another artist's work. Um, how long is the show going to last? I've already kind of answered that. Also, are there community activities Locust Project will help triggering the audience in space. Yes. If you have anything particular in mind, you can um, note it in your um, project proposal, but that will be something that we can talk about in more detail if you are selected. Uh, my BFA program has a completion date of 2022. Fortunately, I was granted the opportunity to put a pause for my full-time studies and participate in the Workforce Miami. However, never taking a pause in my creative practice, I'm currently enrolled in one course to complete my BFA. You are not eligible. Um, so just wait until next year uh, or when you complete your BFA and then you can apply. If we need connection to a local network to make the project, musicians performance, could you help finding those connections? Um, we can, you know, help connect you with the network that we have in Miami. Um, and, you know, you can kind of take it from there, but yeah, we will connect you the best that we can. Uh, if we are selected, how long do we have to create the installation? As in how long can we work in the project room? How long will the installation be on display? Um, I've kind of already answered this. Um, you know, we have written in there into these materials that um, we have a 21 day per diem um, maximum that we would allow. All projects are different. So, you know, if you need a week to install or if you need two weeks to install, um, you can, we, we can talk about that in more detail later. But if you do have a really long installation process, it's a very involved project, I would make sure you hit upon that in your project description so that the committee isn't scared away from it. Um, ooh, these questions just keep going. <laughs> okay, where are we? Uh, can the project be socially engaged art project where the community can take part in the work? Yes. Um, we are unable to read any of the previous questions asked by others until you answer them. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know how to I don't know how to enable that. Um, will what will the duration of the exhibition be? We've already answered that. Um, is the artist expected to have the work ready or will be or will there be production time there? 
are the three weeks only for exhibition time? No, that's production time. Um, so, you know, in the 25 years that Locust Project has been in existence, um, I would say almost every installation, there's elements that the artist is creating in their personal studio uh, that they are bringing with them in addition to whatever it is that they're trying to facilitate there. Um, I'm sure there's been a case or two where maybe absolutely everything was produced um, at Locust, but usually there's at least one element or something um, that is coming from the artist studio. Uh, it looks like there are some power outlets. There are. Um, are these indicated by the dashes in the floor plan? Hmm. Um, oh, and this one that I have here. I will have to look at that. I'm not sure. There are there are outlets. Um, hello. If part of our installation has something similar to an art o mat where the audience can interact and buy from, would Locus accept that? Sure. As long as you're proposing a new site specific work, um, and we Locus Project are commissioning you to do that, it's fine. Um, are there any planned artist talks events? We already talked about that. Um, will the open call in the spring be open to international arts too? Yes, um, uh, the, it will be open to local, national and international artists. What is the start and end of the 2023 open call timeframe? When will a selected artist be installing, be installing? Um, uh, I've kind of answered this, but I will take from that um, just so you know the process. So the applications are due on November 30th and the review committee, it will take a few months for the review committee to go through all of your materials, to meet, to talk about the proposals and to make selections. Um, so likely you will not hear back from us until um, uh, that would be the end of January, early February. Um, and we will say, um, you know, thank you, you've been, been selected or, um, you know, and we'd like to have further conversations or we will say, thank you for applying. You know, unfortunately you weren't selected. Uh, do you have black curtains to close up the openings or do you, you need to plan for anything like that in your budget? Um, if your proposal is selected, will you be able to find out the reasoning? If your proposal is selected, will you be able to find out the reasoning? Well, I think if you're selected, you're pretty happy, right? <laughs> um, so I don't know if you need a reason, uh, but maybe you meant if your proposal is not selected. Um, I try to answer these questions as best as possible. So you will get an email from me, whether you were selected or whether you were not selected. And if you um, want, if you have additional questions, you want to know, you know, in the 300 proposals that may have come into Locust Projects, where did my proposal fall? Because we're using a number ranking system. Uh, just send me an email and I will provide that information to you. If there is a need to purchase equipment, do we have to plan for shipment? Yes. Uh, or would that be part of the assets of Locust Projects? If you need to purchase equipment, it should be in your project budget. And if it needs to ship to Locust, that should also be in your project budget. Does the site have an on-site lift ladder cherry picker to use? Or should I include one in the line item? I don't know the answer to this question. Um, I know we have a ladder. <laughs> I don't know if we have a lift. Can you answer that question? You're, you're on mute right now, but do you know? Do we have a lift or is it just a ladder? You're still on mute. There, I just had to mute it because we have work uh, going on. Uh, we do uh, rent a scissor lift if it is asked for, and we do have like some uh, you know, both the ladders. Uh, great. Side. Thank you. Um, if selected, what point do we get the budget? Do we need to start by funding the project with our own funds? Um, we'll negotiate this with you if you're selected. So I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about that at this point. 
would proposals, oh, I'm almost at the end, <laughs> would proposals that include live performance uh, multiple times a week be potentially suitable for the space? Sure, that's fine. Um, just uh, make sure it's very clear in your project description, and it should also be representative in your budget if there's multiple performances that are happening and if there's things that you need for it. Um, do you have any resources opportunities for people with less experience uh, getting started in work like this? I don't know exactly how to answer this question. Um, this opportunity is for professional artists, so this should not be the first exhibition that you have. Um, we do, you know, want to facilitate to the best of our needs, uh, helping you do what you're trying to do. Um, but, uh, you know, you need to do the work on your end to figure out what it is that you need and, and the resources that you need. Um, do you have any resources opportunities? Oh, shoot, I just did that one. <laughs> Maybe it came in twice. Um, what proposals that include live performers multiple times a week would be potential? I think this just got there again, but uh, yes, you can. Um, you can definitely submit a project that has a live performance aspect to it. Um, that is fine. Um, wow, we got to the end of those. Nice. <laughs> um, well, that, that took longer than I thought. Uh, let me, yeah, and I would say if you have any other questions or you have very specific questions, um, you know, go ahead and email me directly at submissions at locustprojects.org. If there's anything that came up in this conversation, I know there's that outstanding uh, question about the roof and wanting a picture of it, um, just send me an email. Uh, equipment list, um, I can get an equipment list to anyone who um, requires that information again just send me an email or if you have some question that was outside of all of these questions that i just answered um, feel free to send me an email do not send me an email at 11 p.m on november 30th <laughs> um you know I will be, you know, looking at things as much as I can, but I wouldn't expect that you're going to get a, a response so that you can get your application in in time. So don't leave it to the last minute. If you have questions, you know, please just send them at any time um, before the last day, <laughs> preferably. Uh, so thank you all for joining us. Hopefully your questions got answered. Hopefully you have a better understanding of our new project space and the types of work that we're looking for. If Locust Project is new to you, I would highly recommend that you spend some time going through our website, looking at projects that we've supported before, understanding who we are as an organization um, and the types of works that often get selected. Um, and if you are in Miami um, or you are based in, in Southern Florida, I would recommend that you go see the space um, if you haven't been there yet. Uh, Jen Clay's exhibition is up uh, through Saturday. So you've got a couple days to get there um, and see it, um, to see her show and also see the room. So thank you all for joining us and good luck. We look forward to seeing your proposal. <laughs>